Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. The first story on our list today is potential leaks from OpenAI's forthcoming DALI 3 model. A user first appeared on Discord in May, claiming to be part of an alpha test of the latest text-to-image model from OpenAI. Now, the leaker showed off a few photos then, and just recently, they have popped back up on Discord again, with a new set of images that show off what they say DALI 3 can do. According to the leaker, the model is currently only accessible to about 400 people. There are a few notable things about this model. First of all is that, as you can see from the image on your screen, which if you're listening to this, not watching, I highly encourage you to check out the video as well, involves some images that might not make it to the final sanguinized version that is released to the public. Among other things, it includes copyrights. In this photo that we're looking at, there is a Subway sandwich with the Subway logo clearly available. But it also is purportedly able to handle text better. For example, there's an image of an angel that says, be not afraid above. This is obviously one of the big things that people have been excited about with the latest Stable Diffusion XL release as well. Another thing that this new model reportedly does really well is handle more complex prompts with more small details. For example, a wombat sits in a yellow beach chair while sipping a martini that is on his laptop keyboard. The wombat is wearing a white Panama hat and a floral Hawaiian shirt. Out of focus palm trees in the background, DSLR photograph, wide angle view. That would be a lot of instructions to get right for current models, and it seems to here, again, assuming that the leaker is actually being truthful. Another example comes from the prompt, a group of farm animals, cows, sheep, and pigs, made out of cheese and ham on a wooden board. There's a dog in the background eyeing the board hungrily. This prompt has a lot of what's called concept spillover. In other words, the image model mixes different content concepts. However, this output of Dolly 3 is able to distinguish between the dog that is actually a dog in the background and the animals made out of cheese that are in the foreground. When Decoder did the same prompt, there's a bunch of cheese on a table and a couple dogs in the background, one of which has cow horns. This wasn't the only interesting AI image generation news. NVIDIA has also released research about its new Perfusion image generator model, which is notable for its tiny size and the fact that it reportedly only takes four minutes to train. The Perfusion model was presented in a recent research paper that was created by NVIDIA and Tel Aviv University. Its main technique or new idea is called key locking. As Decrypt describes it, This works by connecting new concepts that a user wants to add, like a specific cat or chair, to a more general category during image generation. This helps avoid overfitting, which is when the model gets too narrowly tuned to the exact training examples. Overfitting makes it hard for the AI to generate new creative versions of the concept. By tying the new cat to the general notion of a feline, the model can portray the cat in many different poses, appearances, and surroundings, but it still retains the essential catness that makes it look like the intended cat, not just any random feline. So in simple terms, key locking lets the AI flexibly portray personalized concepts while keeping their core identity. It's like giving an artist the following directions. Draw my cat Tom while sleeping, playing with yarn, and sniffing flowers. Trying to super simplify it, I think what's conceptually exciting about this is that by training the model on a specific object that you want to be represented in the output photos, it opens up the possibility not just of a generalized image of a concept, but of a very specific example. Again, it's not just any cat in these images, it's your cat. So overall, lots of exciting things happening in the AI image generation space. Next, we have a story at the intersection of AI and health. In a study conducted over the course of about a year and a half, radiologists supported by AI were 20% more able to detect breast cancer than were their colleagues who weren't using AI. The study was published in Lancet Oncology and looked at scans of more than 80,000 women in Sweden who had a mammogram between April 2021 and July 2022. 40,000 of them were assigned to a group where AI had read the mammogram before a radiologist looked at it, and the other half had their scans read by two radiologists but without the use of AI. All the radiologists in both samples were considered highly experienced. Overall, the screening that was a single radiologist supported by AI detected 6 per 1,000 screened women, compared with 5 per 1,000 for the team of radiologists that didn't have AI. Now, importantly, this wasn't AI being oversensitive. The AI-supported radiologists did not have a higher false positive rate than the two radiologists who weren't using AI. What's more, the group that was using AI had a reduced reading workload of 44%. Summing it up, AI led to better results with less time, which is sort of the dream. Next up, we move to the world of social media and content where YouTube is testing using AI to summarize videos. Basically, YouTube is trying to solve a problem which has plagued any platform that handles long-form content, be it videos or podcasts. And that is discoverability for new videos and trying to get people to try out things that they haven't watched before. The experiment has AI auto-generating video summaries so that, quote, it's easier for you to read a quick summary about a video and decide whether it's the right fit for you. 
Right now, the test is limited to a small handful of creators, as well as a small handful of users. Speaking of video, one project that I'm watching closely is still just at the demo and testing stage. It comes from a company called Sync Labs, and is basically software that translates video into other languages, and then overlays lip syncing on the video of the speaker. The most recent example that Prati, the founder of Sync Labs, posted was from David Sachs from the All In podcast speaking Hindi, a language which he doesn't speak, and in which this novel translation and lip sync was done in less than five minutes. I think one of the most interesting and positive outcomes for AI when it comes to content is the breaking down of linguistic barriers, so I am keeping a close eye on this project. Finally, moving over to markets, earnings season continues, and yesterday it was AMD's turn. Perhaps not surprisingly, given the white-hot AI chip space that it's in, sales and profit both exceeded analyst projections, and the company also reported that their accelerators, which is a type of processor that speeds up the development of AI software, is drawing even more interest than anticipated from customers. The company is looking to ramp up production of its MI300 chips over the course of this year, and one of the things that they're looking into is developing a less powerful chip that can be exported to China under current export controls. This is something that NVIDIA does, but is also coming under increasing scrutiny in Washington. Just a couple days ago, Reuters ran with the headline, U.S. lawmakers urge Biden administration to tighten AI chip export rules. The story was about a bipartisan open letter written to Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo asking the U.S. to further strengthen chip export rules, tightening especially restrictions on AI chips even further. This is a great example of where AI is meeting geopolitics in a big, challenging mess. Overall, Wall Street investors are mixed. On the one hand, people were impressed by AMD's results, but overall there is definitely a growing sense that the AI-driven rally may be coming up against its limits. As of around noon today, AMD shares were down 6%, NVIDIA was down 4%, and the PHLX Semiconductor Sector Index was down more than 3%. So friends, that is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button below, or if you're listening, come check out the YouTube channel, and I'll be back soon with the main AI Breakdown.